Thank Thanks, you, Scott. Scott. And uh, I want to mention that uh, if you live in Vermillion Parish, south of I-14, you should not try to go home. The sheriff's office uh, telling us that two people have been arrested for looting, one arrested in Delcom and another north of Kaplan. Deputies have recovered sto stolen boats and TV sets, computers and stereos. They say more arrests are pending. So there are reports of looting because mm -hmm. that, that was another question that um, like I mentioned earlier I was uh, doing a little personal business bank banking this morning and that was one of the questions uh, uh, dominating the conversation in the lobby of the bank there folks were, what have you heard about uh, the looting and then where is it happening and how bad is it and it's not that bad. It doesn't look very bad uh, with just two reported uh, incidences but uh, that was earlier. So and you know that would explain Tom the um, folks have been asking about the curfews that had been in place mm -hmm. and that was one reason one obviously there were still uh, there's still a lot of debris on the roads and curfews were put in place to protect people but also to hold back on on that element and unfortunately it happens mm -hmm. but that was one way that officials in the area were trying to keep uh, control of that I was uh, just delighted at the number of people who were giving us unbelievable amounts of uh, information on the internet over the Absolutely. last uh, a couple of days I guess and uh, we really appreciate that but you have become a lot of folks out there not just in the yeah, but all over the area mm -hmm. uh, sort of reporters for TV3 by doing that we appreciate your efforts giving us information about questions that were asked about from other residents who were emailing us so we appreciate that yes, but we may be going back to that press conference in Lake Charles FEMA uh, has spoken. There's been some local officials uh, speaking. Randy Roach, the, the mayor of Lake Charles, Mary Landrew, spoke for a few minutes to talk about uh, some of the current needs uh, and also the future requests that our local delegation in Louisiana would be making uh, on Congress uh, to get more monies down here to support the efforts of the relief efforts of, 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 of Rita and mm -hmm. Katrina, but also to uh, address the issues of uh, future uh, development of our uh, coastal uh, issues, issues. Exactly. and they are huge. Some of the barrier islands, barrier islands have been affected and that kind of thing. And of course, levee breaks, uh, the importance of our uh, oil and gas uh, development and industry in Louisiana, Southeast and Southwest Louisiana. So there's a lot of money that's gonna be needed to fund all those projects. And I'm sure that delegation is, is quite busy putting together the packages. Another area that took a severe hit and, and is obvious at this point for me to even state it, but um, as you mentioned, our agricultural uh, industry, it's just unbelievable. You're talking rice and sugar cane um, really took a really big hit, especially with the flooding mm -hmm. more than anything. Sugar cane obviously had a lot of wind damage at first. You could see it. You could see the crops. You could... Uh, but uh, with the water coming in and that storm surge rising um, and the waters getting as high as they did, sugarcane farmers devastated. Very much so. And I'm also thinking, too, on another note, how we're going to be prepared, individually going to be prepared from here on out after the effects of Katrina and Rita. Katrina was enough. Exactly. But then uh, the double whammy of Rita coming into our area, I think people really, because that's the talk, talk at the coffee shops, mm -hmm. about what I'm going to do for me and my family next time there's an alert, there's a, a something, a, some disturbance coming into the Gulf. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the smaller communities around here, and even a bigger community like Lafayette, uh, you, we can think in terms of, well, there's plenty of grocery stores out there and filling stations. We go and tank up our car the day before. But after the evacuations from both the west and the east, we saw a tremendous need for these services and products, gasoline and, and food stuffs. Mm -hmm. So when we went to the grocery stores and to the filling stations to tank up uh, our, and fill our up. <laughs> yeah, uh, tank up and fill up, there was nothing, nothing many times because mm -hmm. our friends from the east and the west need to share in those products and services that are offered by our grocery stores. So I think locally, a lot of us will see a hurricane or a, a depression coming into the Gulf we're going to go to the grocery store a lot earlier now mm -hmm. and get what we need to anticipate the fact that there may be thousands and thousands of motorists coming through our towns that need the same thing, particularly gas, ice, water, mm -hmm. and uh, non perishables That's right. Seeking shelter, and, and mm -hmm. you're absolutely right. And then we even saw some of our landmark um, grocery stores, mm -hmm. our little mom and pop shops that you're right, that we run to really quickly and get what we need, many of them underwater. Yep. Mm -hmm. so, so not only did they not necessarily have what we needed because they sold out with all of the uh, recent um, evacuees into the area, but mm -hmm. 
they were also just unavailable because of the water. And we'll probably see a l big increase in the purchase of generators. Uh, we saw it already, yes, but yes. Uh, in, in times where we're not having any kind of big weather problem, We'll probably see people get prepared just a little bit earlier. And I think that's the, that's the message is prepare you and your family right away as early as you can when you see something like, or even in times where there's not significant weather, inclement weather out there. So we'll learn all this stuff. Oh yeah, we will. We will. And these are words not to be taken for granted. You know, another thing that I heard quite a bit um, from folks calling in, uh, they were caught in the mm -hmm. water and it was simply because they, they heard the words, you know, mm -hmm. storm surge. But a lot of folks had the mindset, Tom, that storm surge meant as soon as, you know, as it got, as uh, Rita got close, the water was going to come in and it was going to rush and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So they felt, well, you know, hmm, I, I survived Rita, just like many folks said about Katrina. Mm -hmm. And then the water came in and then the water continued yeah. to When's rise. Yeah, the last time you saw that and much water in Vermilion Parish? Exactly. Very scary. We're going to, uh, in a couple of minutes, go back out to uh, what we're teaming up with the United Way with, and that's over at uh, St. Edmund's Catholic mm -hmm. Church. They're located at the corner of Congress and Ambassador Caffrey. Julie Kelly is out there with a little report on this pretty little day, unlike it was during the Katrina, <laughs> the Katrina relief effort. But we will join Julie in just a couple of minutes. Generous Acadiana, of course. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. You've been out here for a while and you've had a chance to see the folks coming by. Are they bringing what we need? Well, we just really started the, the, the effort drive. down mm -hmm. at the, the drive. And mm -hmm. I think what they need primarily, and I am hope they're, they're coming through with this, is tuna and breakfast. In fact, why don't we let Julie tell Kelly us. tell us good. exactly what we need. Julie, how you doing?